In this video, we'll be diving deep into Round Rock, what's good about it, what's bad about it, what you can expect, a general overview, things to do, and so much more. So if that's what you clicked on this video to find out, do us both a favor and stay tuned. Hello again, ladies and gents. The beverage of choice for this video is indeed some red, red wine, courtesy of Neil Diamond, one of my favorite singer-songwriters. If you're wondering what in fact this is, yes, I in fact cut a straw in half. I am trying to be mindful and a little bit paranoid of my teeth uh, and my lips getting stained throughout the, uh, the course of this video. So it might not work, but uh, we'll see how they look uh, by the end of this video. Anyways, if this is your first time of the channel, I am your host. My name is Frank, or Francis if you will, or if you won't. And I'm part of a team at the award-winning JB Goodwin Brokerage right here in the exemplary Austin, Texas. Each and every week, we put out tons of new content all in regards to living in Austin, Texas, whether it be the pros and cons, vlog tours of certain areas and suburbs, comparisons of certain cities and states, and so much more. So if you haven't already, consider subscribing to our channel and ringing the little bell so that you're notified each and every time we put out a new video. Ever since the conception of this channel, we've received lots of reach outs from people just like you who need our help when relocating to Austin, Texas. So whether you're nine days away or 90 days away or anything in between, go ahead and reach out to us, whether you email us, whether you text us, or whether you call us any day of the week, any time of day. It's what we love to do, so we do it. Without further ado, let's quit goofing around, get serious, and talk about Round Rock, Texas. For starters, in my experience, Round Rock has always just been there. You know what I mean? It, it has always maintained the reputation as a sort of safe haven from the inner city, from the metro area, from the densely populated downtown Austin living. It's almost as if downtown is 1A and Round Rock is 1B. Yes, it is suburbia. Yes, it is a completely different flavor of living, but it's always been a staple of the greater Austin area. Even 20 years ago, I'm talking late, wow, I'm, time has gone by, right? So 20 plus years ago, I'm talking late 90s, maybe early 2000s, even then, Round Rock had the reputation as one of the fastest growing city suburbs in the entire country. And as of today, all these years later, it might not be number one, which it was once upon a time. It is still though, one of the fastest growing city suburbs in the nation all these years later. It's got its own downtown. It's got major employers there now. There are loads of things to do, lots of parks and development. Now, the cool thing about Ron Rock is when you compare it to a lot of its neighboring city suburbs, such as Pflugerville, such as Cedar Park, even Leander close by or a bit north if you're talking Georgetown, a lot of those places have peaked and then dipped. Like Cedar Park was exploding in the 2000s, even in the 2010s, and now, there's not much more land for Cedar Park to grow with. At the end of the day, there's not a ton of things to do in Cedar Park. And similar with Georgetown. Yes, Georgetown has expanded quite a bit, but it is still, all these years later, quite a small town with, yes, there's still new builds and different communities and projects, but my point is none of these places have continued to grow and evolve the way Round Rock has, as if it's really its own entity, its own major city. Now, don't get me wrong, it can still be boring. It can still be not too beautiful. It's not like their downtown is anything worthy of a comparison to the city of Austin, so don't get me wrong. But in my own life experience and in my experience in real estate, a lot of the clients we've helped relocate at the top of their list consistently without fail is almost always Round Rock. So for better and worse, Let's explain why. In the past, the people who've had Round Rock at the top of their list have since either eliminated it completely or they've circled it even harder, right? It can be disenchanting. It can be not quite what you want it to be. And so I am going to be brutally honest. If you've watched any of our videos, if there is one thing about me, it is that I can often lack tact. I can be without a filter and I just tell it like it is, which can be good and bad, but in my profession, I consider it to be a good thing, especially in a culture and in a profession that is very slimy sometimes, it's very false, it can be very, I don't know, this is perfect, that is perfect, just kind of 
the traditional ways of doing real estate that I think a lot of us can now agree are just gross. Um, I will be honest about what I like about it, but I'll give it to you straight. So for some positivity off the bat, let's give you a general overview. Round Rock is going to be approximately 19 miles, depending on where in Round Rock you live, from the city of Austin, depending on where in the city you'd like to be. Because of that, you're looking at a commute that some might say is great, some might say is bad, depending on your own experience, of about 20 to maybe 30 to even maybe 40 minutes, depending on traffic. In my experience, it's usually about 25 to 35 minutes to get from point A to point B, A being Round Rock, B being downtown. The reason I say it's good and bad is because a lot of the people we've helped, they come from LA or San Francisco or New York City or Oregon, places where the traffic is just so mind-blowingly atrocious that they're used to driving 40 minutes a day, 45 minutes a day, an hour a day, or even an hour plus a day in their daily commute to work. And so when we tell them that, hey, you know, you're driving, sorry to tell you, you know, maybe 20, 25 minutes, maybe a half hour, it's like, oh, that's actually a breath of fresh air. However, on the flip side, there are also people we've helped who are used to driving five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes in their daily commutes. And so when we break the news, they say, ooh, you know, that's, that's a little bit much for what we're looking for. And so just off of that, we scratched it off the list. The plus side is a lot of the people who are relocating to Austin, they don't necessarily work downtown. That is the specific example I'm using. A lot of them work near the domain area where a lot of these tech companies are moving. And a lot of them work in Round Rock because it does, as I mentioned, have major employers, the biggest being Dell. Yes, Dell. Um, I, I laugh because you would think that Dell would be one of these companies that's based in California or something like that. But no, Dell, as in Dell Computers, is actually based in Round Rock, always has been, which is just a little random. Like, I know Austin is becoming a hotspot, right? I understand the relocation hotspot that it is in today's current market. Uh, but just Round Rock specific, like why Round Rock? Anyways, not complaining though. A lot of people work for Dell and they live in Round Rock because it's just a hop and a skip away. In addition to Dell, you've got major employers like Toppen, Denali, MI, which is uh, manufacturing. The Round Rock Independent School District, which we'll get to a little bit later in this video, is a massive employer for the general Round Rock area. And in addition, you'll find a lot of people in the healthcare world living in Round Rock as well, especially the profession of being a nurse. That is very popular, at least in my experience in the Round Rock area. It might be, it might not be at the top of many lists in terms of biggest employers for Round Rock, but just being around there, the people you meet, the people you help, you hear, I'm a nurse, I'm a nurse all the time. So I wanted to mention that in this video. Another thing that attracts people to Round Rock is something I mentioned prior in this video that I'll elaborate on a little bit more right now. And that would be the reputation of Round Rock. For starters, we've got the schools. Uh, Round Rock Independent School District is neck and neck in my opinion with the Leander Independent School District. Both of them are very large. Round Rock is just a little bit larger. I believe Leander has about 30,000 students. Round Rock has about 40,000 students. Great graduation rates, great SAT and ACT scores. If you want more information on specific school districts in the greater Austin area, we did a top five video on that, I believe. So go ahead and check that out. But the Round Rock Independent School District is just very respected. They have too many elementary schools to count. They have several middle schools and quite a large number of high schools. I think the number is nine high schools, which is a lot of high schools. In addition, they've got great clubs, they've got great athletic programs, they've got great boosters, which if you're from out of state or maybe, I don't know how your district does things, but in our districts here in Texas, we have boosters, which essentially are parents who donate money to the district so that they have nice jerseys or football stadiums or the, the money to send the kids on trips to have nice libraries, laptops, all that good stuff. In the past, clients we've helped that we've actually kind of taken them on tours and drove by the schools have actually expressed to us that they get the impression that these are private schools compared to perhaps wherever they were living, right? If they had a school that was very inner city that had chalkboards or, or broken air conditioning units, things of that nature that was normal to them. You know, here, aside from wearing a uniform, they really do look like fancy private schools. And that is something that is not just exclusive to Round Rock or Leander for that matter, but is a standard for Texas schools 
that really has the reputation that brings a lot of people to the area because a lot of the people coming are families and they want their kids to be in good schools so they come to Texas and more specifically to Austin and even more specifically to either Round Rock or Leander. In addition to the schools, what attracts a lot of people to Round Rock, and I believe the number is approximately 130,000 residents right now, are all the awards that Round Rock has won. I mean, I, I, <laughs> I'd be itching my head to try and find all of them, but I mean, every year it would seem, at least in my profession, reading through the real estate magazines, staying up to date with market analysis and this and that, Round Rock always wins best this, best that, best neighborhoods, best city to raise a family, best schools, best doc, you name it, it's won it. So it's very prestigious with the awards and accolades it has gathered over the years. And because of that, more money is funneled into it and it has a booming economy with all the jobs. So they do open more parks. They do open more venues and restaurants and activities, recreational activities, which I will get to in this video. And just overall, a lot of different things to do while maintaining a certain affordability in comparison to the median prices in the greater Austin area. Now, in the spirit of honesty, I'm going to take a break from all the positive and amazing things about Round Rock and get to some of those juicy negatives that we're all wondering about. But before I do, go ahead and comment down below with any questions you might have for us, agreements or disagreements, or ideas for future videos we could make for you guys. In addition to that, consider liking this video as well as it really helps our channel grow. And if you have a parent, if you have a spouse, if you have a child, anyone in your life that you know who is contemplating a move to Austin, Texas, go ahead and share our content with them and spread the good word. Moving on now to the lesser desirable things about living in Round Rock, Texas. For starters, this is going to be something subjective. Um, so I'm not going out and making a factual objective statement. This is very much my own opinion. And for starters, it would be the fact that I just don't think Round Rock is all that pretty. Now, granted, <clears throat> living in Austin, Texas is not going to be breathtakingly beautiful regardless. This isn't Utah, this isn't Washington State, this isn't Oregon, this isn't Montana, this isn't Northern California, so on and so forth. This is Texas. And Texas, for the longest time, has been farm and ranch land. Now, don't get me wrong, there are beautiful nature spots in Texas. We have some hills, not mountains, but hills, and little different pockets of scenery that do make it an enticing and gorgeous place to live. It does have a very active and healthy lifestyle. Having said that though, especially in suburbia, it's just not gorgeous. Um, <clears throat> and I realize that you might not care, but a lot of people do. Um, and I'm someone who admires nature. I love the artistry of nature. And so I'm sensitive to that to some degree. And when it comes to Round Rock, yes, you'll have beautiful trees. You'll see a lot of green. I mentioned the parks. But other than that, you know, it's just a typical suburb um, <laughs> that can be charming in, in some ways. And by the way, we did shoot a vlog tour of Round Rock quite some time ago. It was one of our very first videos, um, but we did our best. So go ahead and check that out if you're curious to really see Round Rock with your eyes, because, you know, the truth of the matter is you can only hear someone like myself talk about it so much and you can look up pictures, but that's why we like to do the vlogs, to give people a good idea of just what their everyday life is going to look like. Another thing I'll mention, in addition to lacking beauty that I've already talked about, is a lot of Round Rock is near I-35. And I-35 is a main artery of travel through Texas and Oklahoma and so on to get in Austin, to get out of Austin. And so Round Rock is just a little bit east of that freeway. And unless you're going inland a little more towards the east into these master plan communities, into these secluded luxurious areas, a lot of Round Rock is going to be near the main freeway. And I'm sure it's similar where you live. Anything that just runs along a main artery of travel is going to be an eyesore. You know, there's going to be lots of construction, just food chain restaurants, it's flat. It's just not that endearing, you know what I mean? And so I think a lot of people have this idea that Round Rock is this secluded little place in a bubble away from the noise. And that is true to an extent, but it is not without its 
eyesore areas. It's not without its traffic and, and, and just, it might not be completely what you expect, at least around the freeway. Now on the subject of traffic, that is something I'll mention as well that is a drawback to Round Rock. Yes, again, it is removed from the city and so you're not dealing with city traffic, but Round Rock itself has its own rush hour. I mean, my brokerage where, where I used to work a lot in the office is actually in Round Rock and I lived about maybe 15 minutes away and some days I'd leave the office around five or six and it would take me 30 minutes, 40 minutes just to get home, which really pissed me off. And so um, I'm just warning you, it still has its stop lights, it still has its speed limits that are maybe 35 or 45. And because so many people do work out of Round Rock because of those employers I mentioned, it's, it's going to be quite a bit of a mess in the rush hour time. It's not exempt from that just because it's, you know, a suburb. And that is something that Round Rock has that other suburbs don't necessarily have. Like, I spent a lot of time in Cedar Park growing up and there wasn't really any Cedar Park traffic. I spent a lot of time in Leander growing up and there wasn't a lot of Leander traffic and same can be said with Georgetown. So. Round Rock, because it is so big, because so many people have moved there, it's because so many people work there, it does resemble kind of like a little miniature version of city traffic, just in its own style. Another thing I'd like to mention that is not necessarily specific to Round Rock, but is worth mentioning in this video is the subject of the weather. I'm talking to the people who are coming here from out of state the truth of the matter is, it is gonna be pretty brutal here in in Austin, I, just by default, being in Texas in the south. Um, what you've really gotta look out for are those summer months. So I'm talking about the end of May through, I guess, early September. That is when it hits the triple digits. And even when it's not triple digits, it can be 90 degrees. As of the making of this video, it is June of 2021. So the other day we had a day where the high was 90 degrees <laughs> and on the app, you can scroll down and under feels like it was 103. <laughs> so you can only imagine the days when it's actually 103 degrees outside. Um, and then you factor in a little bit of humidity if, if, if the air is not coming from the north. And that could feel easily like 110, 115, so on. So the good news is the rest of the year, it's relatively nice. It's relatively warm. You're going to be looking at I guess on average 70s or 80s and then maybe in the fall and winter you're looking at 50s and 60s. Occasionally we'll have um, freezing temperatures and maybe some sleet. Um, I, I don't call it snow because it's not snow. We get snow maybe once every seven years, um, but we, we will have sleet and but otherwise it's going to be 30s, 40s and 50s for those months. So if you are coming from a place that is say snowed in six months of the year, it's going to be a breath of fresh air. Um, otherwise, I, I'm just wanting to give you that heads up about the heat in the summer. <sighs> you know, you can hear about it, you can hear people like me talk about it, but until you experience it, it is just, it is like opening the oven and when you're baking cookies and the heat just slaps you on the face. That is what it's like to step outside your front door during the day in the summer. And then of course, here's a life hack tip. You wanna open your car door if your car sleeps outside, turn on the car, blast the AC, roll all the windows down, walk away from the car, let the heat escape, give it a few minutes and then get in your car. Um, take it from me, <laughs> that's how I've lived all my life here. Uh, so, little nugget of wisdom for you. Another negative aspect, and this time, yes, specific to Round Rock, that I'd be remiss if I did not mention, is the subject of things to do. Now, in the same video you're watching right now, I'm going to talk about the many things to do in Round Rock, so I don't mean to contradict myself, but it ends up being subjective to who you are. If you are someone who likes to go to bars or go to clubs or go to art museums or go to historical museums or music venues or theaters, anything of that nature, uh, you're, you can do that in downtown, but in Round Rock, you're not going to have the same luck. Yes, it is a great suburb. Yes, it has a lot of things to do. 
but it's it's downtown don't get me wrong is is not on par with downtown downtown at the end of the day round rock is a suburb and Suburban life can be great for many of you, but it could also be a little bit boring for many of you. And yes, it does have much to offer, but it doesn't have everything to offer. The good news is that you are within reasonable proximity to the downtown metro area, especially if you wanted to do things like paddleboarding or kayaking or some of the, the staple Austinite activities that a lot of people like to do outdoors. So if the normal things like shopping, like parks or just general suburban things are enough to keep you satisfied day to day over a long period of time that you live there, then great, look no further. But otherwise, I just felt the need to warn you, I guess, that it, it won't have everything you want. And some of the people we've worked with have expressed that to us and scratched Round Rock off the list because in their day-to-day -day lives, they just want a certain different flavor. So we've tackled the weather, we've tackled the lack of scenery, we've tackled how it might potentially be boring, we've tackled the congested traffic, which reminds me of my own nostrils before I go to bed and use some nasocort. I don't know if that's a getting older thing or if I should just be concerned, but I'm going to ignore it. But if you think I'm done ranting about the negatives of Round Rock, Texas, much to my chagrin and probably yours, you are mistaken, I am not done. There is one more point I'd like to make, and that would be the tax rates. If you've watched any of our previous videos, you know I am a stickler for those tax rates. I always mention them without fail. <laughs> so I do apologize if it's redundant, but I'm just gonna get through it as quick as I can. Okay, so if you are moving from a place where the tax rate is 1% or 1.5%, you're about to be pretty pissed off because when you live in Austin, Texas, which by the way is the most expensive city to live in in all of Texas, not sure if you knew that, but now you do, you are going to just be so unpleasantly surprised because the lowest you can get here in Austin, if you live in an older area or maybe deep in the city, it's going to be around 2%. The normal average of a tax rate you can get within the totality of the greater Austin area is going to be at least two and a half percent. 2.75 is pretty normal, 2.85 or nine is normal. And in those newer built communities with brand new homes and shopping strips and so on and so forth, you're looking at 3% or higher. And it's just the, the fine print, you know, it's what you kind of gloss over before moving. But I like to bring it up because a lot of people, when they're budgeting, when they're talking with their lenders or when we get them in touch with our lenders, they're blindsided. They're, they're, they're budgeting for this and that, but they're not taking into account the property tax rate of wherever they would like to live. And yes, it's true that the state of Texas has no state income tax. That is why so many companies, specifically from Silicon Valley, are coming here to Texas and why so many other people are coming here to Texas. But the flip side, the tails to that coin, which I guess was heads and now this is tails, are the property taxes. Just to give you an idea, <clears throat> if we are using conservative numbers, let's say we find a house that is $350,000 and let's say you find a tax rate that is 2.5%. Both of those might be a little below the average for cost of home and average tax rate. But let's say you get lucky, 350 and two and a half. That is going to be just shy of $9,000 a year on those property taxes. And I'm not even talking about a house that's 450 or half a mil or 650 or 800 or 900 or a million with a tax rate of 2.75%, 2.9%, 3%. 2 if you're looking at nine grand a year on 350 with two and a half, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I haven't even done the math because I don't want to. It's, it's not going to be a very nice number that you're gonna have to pay. Um, and so in the spirit of absolute transparency, I am telling you now, please do not be blindsided. Whether you work with us, whether you work with someone else you like, I don't care, just be aware. I just rhymed. <laughs> so. Just wanted to get that out there as possibly the last real negative that I talk about. Because yes, Round Rock is a suburb. Yes, Round Rock has great schools. Round Rock has a lot of new developments. And so Round Rock is going to be a prime example of a part of Austin that has those higher property tax rates. I'm alive again. 
which means it's time to be a traditional realtor and talk about everything that is great and perfect about Round Rock, Texas. For starters, let's talk about the affordability. Now, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of what attracts people to Round Rock is how affordable it is in comparison to a lot of other areas in Austin. And unfortunately, as the market becomes hotter and hotter and harder as it is right now, the prices go up and up and up. So it is still possible to find a first time buyer type of home if you're looking in the two and three hundreds. Um, you might find a three bed, two bath or something of that nature between say 1500 and 2500 square feet. Um, but nowadays your average median in Round Rock is going to be between 400 and $450,000, depending on your source. So that's the bad news. But the good news is for that price point, you can get a lot more than you might get wherever you're moving from. Because as I mentioned in a lot of our other videos, you might be living in a 1600 square foot townhouse in Portland that is three bed, two bath, and you could sell that for 400 grand, take that 400 grand and buy something here that has four bedrooms, five bedrooms, maybe it has 3,000 square feet, maybe it has four, maybe it has a pool, maybe it's near a golf course, maybe it has a theater room, maybe there's granite, maybe it was built in the last five years, so on and so forth. So yes, it is still true to this day that Texas is the bang for your buck hub. I'm not to say that other states aren't better because you could probably find something in the Midwest for much less. But in the grand scheme of things, in the perspective of Texas and Austin specifically, Run Rock is a great suburb in regards to bang for your buck. But yes, at about 205 bucks per square foot, and as I mentioned, between four and 450 as your median, it is getting a little bit steeper. As we tell our clients, it is no longer about getting a deal. Those days are gone for now for the foreseeable future. Now it's about getting in. When things are competitive, you can't be looking for a bargain. You just need to get your foot in the door, so to speak, of the home of your choice. Another one of the draws that Round Rock has to offer would be the master plan communities. If you are unfamiliar with a master plan community, it is basically very masterfully planned. It, it has a lot of gardens and it has parks and it has elementary schools, it has golf courses. Some of them even have shopping strips right in the neighborhood. It's, 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 it's kind of like its own little mini suburb, its own little mini town. Now, Houston, for example, Houston, Texas has what are really master plan communities. They are absolutely massive. I mean, one of them could be almost as big as Round Rock. <laughs> so, but in, in the grand scheme of things in regards to Austin, we have our own master plan communities that are smaller in comparison to a metropolis like Houston. However, they're still very nice. And as I mentioned, golf courses, stores, schools, all within walking distance. You see a lot of people on golf carts. And so whether it's Round Rock West, Barron's Ranch, Forest Creek, Lake Forest, I don't know why so many neighborhoods put the word forest in their name. It's not like we live in a forest. I don't know. And there's also Terra Vista, which is a great master plan community. Very, very popular, not just in Round Rock, but in the whole greater Austin area. Round Rock does have Terra Vista, an exemplary community. So yes, what draws a lot of people is the, the types of neighborhoods. And within those master plan communities, you have a wide array of different builders. So it's not like you go into the neighborhood and all the houses are cookie cutter, look the same. There's going to be a variety. There's going to be quite a diverse selection for you to choose from. And off the top of my head, those will range from the low 300s to the 700s and then obviously you have options above the 700s if you are someone in a position to stretch your budget. Just beware of the property taxes. Another great attribute of Round Rock is the land it still has for development. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, Round Rock has been growing for decades now, right? And you'd think it would have just stopped like a lot of its neighboring suburbs, but it's just, it's still going. There's still land to be developed which means new built communities, which means new schools, anything of that nature. So if you're coming here and you have the budget to spend and you want something brand new in one of the best suburbs, yes, Run Rock is going to have it. So to my point, it brings a lot of people there. And lastly, one of the most attractive factors of Round Rock, as I've mentioned before, would be the things to do. 
Now, as I mentioned, it might not be your cup of tea, but if it is, you're going to be quite pleased. For starters, they have Dell Diamond, which is basically a place for baseball. I'm not into baseball, so it's not really my jam, but they have a lot of events there. It's all very minor league, it's all very D-league. We have no pro sports teams in Austin, by the way, just thought I'd mention that. So if you're used to going to those events with your families to see one of the pro teams play, you're out of luck. But we have the Dell Diamond. It is just a very big attraction and it has a lot of shopping around it. In addition to that, Round Rock has the Round Rock Premium Outlet Mall, which is right on I-35 coming into Round Rock or out of Round Rock. And I've gone there a number of times throughout my life. I personally like it. To be brutally honest, it's not as gorgeous and pristine as it once was in its heyday. It's well over a decade old now, but it still has quite a good selection of stores and, and things to do while you're there. And around the outlet mall, you have an abundance of other restaurants and eateries, and across the street, you've got an Ikea, which <laughs> I am a humongous fan of Ikea. I mean, I want my whole place to be Ikea, you know what I mean? Another big attraction, dare I say the word attraction, is Round Rock Donuts. And <laughs> it feels silly to mention donuts as a pro to a suburb in a video educating people on where you might be living, but I did not grow up in Round Rock. And I still grew up knowing about Round Rock Donuts. It's kind of like the local version of Krispy Kreme in the sense of we all know what it is, even if you've tried it or not. They are that good, word does spread, and they're opening locations in Cedar Park and other parts of Austin. So if donuts are your jam, I thought it'd be worth a mention. But back to something I would consider a main attraction it is a place that just opened less than a year ago called Kalahari. And Kalahari is a 350 acre indoor water park, one of the largest in the country, if not the largest in the country. And in addition to being an indoor water park, it's also a resort. It has an arcade, it has shopping. It looks like something that is just right out of Las Vegas, barring some of the fun you'd have in Las Vegas. So even if you're living in Round Rock, if you feel like going to stay overnight at the resort in your backyard, you can do so. If you wanna take your kids, you can do so. It is such a big attraction. It's going to draw a lot of tourism to Round Rock, a lot of boom for the economy in Round Rock. However, it's going to increase the population in Round Rock, which means prices go up, which means it gets more crowded. So, you know, good and bad, but that is something that is bringing a lot of people here already. And we took a little stroll into Kalahari in the vlog we did months ago for Round Rock. So again, if you're curious to see, check out the vlog tour. It's in there. Now, last but certainly not least, on the things to do in Round Rock, I have to mention one of the parks. And there are a plenty of parks. I could mention Old Settlers and just a thousand others. Round Rock has an abundance of parks. It is in Texas, after all. Texas loves its parks. The one that I will mention is called the Play for All Park. It is the recipient of numerous grants. It sits on 51,000 square feet of land. It has a zip line, it has a little choo-choo train, it has shovels, it has sand, it has swings, it has Wi-Fi, and so much more. But one of the points of emphasis for this park is that it is accessible to people from all walks of life, whether you're vision impaired, hearing impaired, special needs. And that has a special place in my heart because my mother, who I absolutely adore, does suffer from hearing loss. It is a disability for her. Thankfully, she's not completely deaf, but I grew up around that disability. In addition, my oldest brother, he is autistic, he is epileptic, he is special needs. And so to see the community create things like this to get inclusion and involvement from anyone really strikes a chord within me in the best possible way. It really does hit home. It's near and dear to me and what I care about. So major points for me. And in addition, I know we're talking about Round Rock, but real quick, I'd like to mention a place just north of Round Rock in Georgetown, if you've heard of it, called BIG, which is an acronym for Brookwood in Georgetown. It is a nonprofit organization for adults with special needs. They actually pay them, they go to work. It's something more than just bagging groceries. You know, they work on clay, on pottery. There's a greenhouse and they sell the products that the citizens make to the community and it keeps them running and there's all types of events and parties and it gives them purpose, it gives them something to do. My brother is a citizen there, so I'm proudly representing, you know, I'm wearing the colors, so to speak. I love that place. So if, if you know anyone in your life who is special needs, who is an adult and they're out of the public school system, 
very close to Round Rock is a place that would make a great home for them. So I just wanted to put that out there. So Round Rock might be your jam. It might not be your jam. You know, you might want something closer to the city. You might want a differing suburb entirely or anything in between, which is what we're good at and what we're here to do. Again, we love to help people who are relocating here from a different state to a brand new state. It's very overwhelming. It's very stressful. We like to take that and make it as smooth and easy as possible, finding the perfect place for you to live. So whether you are nine days away, whether you're 90 days away or anything in between, be sure to reach out to us, shoot us a text, give us a call, send us an email any day of the week, any time of day. We've got your back when moving to the fabulous Austin, Texas. And again, we put out tons of new content like this one each and every week. So be sure to subscribe to this channel and ring the little bell so that you're notified each and every time we put out a new video. Consider liking this video again as well as it really helps us grow, tells us that we're doing a good enough job providing value for you. Share this video with any friends or family that you might know who are coming to Austin, Texas. Comment down below with any questions or disagreements or video ideas. And until the next one, you guys, we will absolutely catch you later. No stains.